So I know you're already forecasting it's going to be a volatile week on the markets. Uh, we're seeing right now Dow futures down. Actually, you know, above their lows from earlier this morning, uh, the Dow looking like it's about 150 lower uh, right now. What do you see as the catalyst for all this volatility that you're forecasting? Well, Frank, I'm actually quite impressed on where we are to start off the week. This is the biggest week of earnings. We're looking at one third of the S&P 500. We have Apple, we have Microsoft, we have Amazon. But we also have a nice tilt in industrials. Look at Lockheed Martin. But we're also talking about Boeing. So it's just such a great cross section to understand. But if you look at some of the rhetoric out of China and the fact that you did see the U.S. Treasury note, specific the 10 year note, go lower. The 10 year note is about 1.24, so about six basis points lower. So a tone of uncertainty starting the week. You're also seeing the German boon, which is their 10 year. That's the lowest level we've seen the German boon in about five and a half months. But as I look forward to the week, I do have confidence that we're going to see giant tech deliver. I feel comfortable that the sector rotation that we always talk about is intact. This reopening trade should really come to life with inflation metrics later in the week. But I think the takeaway from a volatility, Frank, is understanding that we are not in the volatile regime. We're not in a volatile market like we were back in March of 2020 in the pandemic. The VIX is only at 20. So with the VIX of 20, yes, there's some apprehension. Yes, there's some caution. We are seeing markets at all-time high, but I think you have to be a stock picker this week, and we do get excited about some of the, the tech stocks really delivering, but more importantly, look at some of the boring names. We get so excited about the Boeings, which really have been laggers year to date. We look at Lockheed Martin coming out today, but also don't forget that we're going to see GDP. That's tangible, Frank. If we can understand what GDP, and I know it's a rear view mirror type of data metric, but we're going to understand what GDP looks like as it continues to go higher in a descending way. So the, what's coming up on the road ahead, the next big thing as far as earnings is obviously Tesla later today. But later this week, we're talking Amazon, Alphabet, um, no shortage of tech names. You say it's a stock pickers market right now. Which one of these companies or stocks do you see outperforming the expectations of the street? I'm not even talking about the, ex the expectations of the estimates, because it seems right now a stock can beat and that not even be good enough. It can actually take a fall. But which one of these do you see is most likely to, to exceed the expectations of the street? You're absolutely right. That's been characteristic of the last couple earnings season. When you do see a top line and a bottom line beat, you still see disappointment in the actual stock performing price. But let's look at Apple, one of the most widely owned stocks in the universe. And we get excited about Apple because look what's going on with buybacks and the conversation with all the cash that Apple has. So I think there's specific uh, opportunities with, within these $2 trillion market capitalization companies like an Apple or Microsoft. But we're going to look for forecasts because we do believe that these buybacks this year may actually push over a trillion dollars, Frank, and that type of buyback really be the next catalyst higher when a lot of people think that this cycle is actually a little bit long in the tooth. You know, one of uh, uh, the potential catalysts for Apple, at least a lot of people have seen it, is the interest uh, from retail traders, especially after that stock split. Um, Robinhood, speaking of retail traders, uh, going to be going public later this week. What's your take on that? It's obviously a tech stock, but a, a lot different than some of those legacy tech stocks that are reporting this week. So Robinhood has been fantastic for the marketplace, brought in a lot of young investors, a lot of young traders. That puts a smile on my face. I do have concern, though, that the majority of their revenue is predicated on paying for order flow. That payment for order flow is really being scrutinized and examined right now by the SEC. So if that's your main line of business, Frank, and all of a sudden it's being scrutinized, I do have concern about actually owning Robinhood from a stock perspective. But the fact that it's a great app that allows people market access for free, you have to remember, nothing in life comes for free, Frank. <laughs> that's very true. Um, one more thing on the road ahead this week is the two-day Fed meeting. What's your take on that? Does that add to the volatility in the markets that you forecast, or does that help reduce it? It absolutely adds to it because you have so many different people on, on, on each side of the fence. We're talking about the inflation alarmists who really were getting excited about this inflation or the fact that the Fed was going to do something due to the inflation. That's when the 10-year note a couple months ago went up to 1.75. But I do think the Federal Reserve is going to stay very, very prudent. You have seen Fed Chairman Powell continue to articulate his message that they do have no intention of doing anything anytime soon, but we will be looking. We're hoping to get some type of hint of them reducing their $120 billion emergency type of stimulus into the marketplace, but I don't see it this week. And that's going to cause a little bit of turbulence, Frank, but I think it's going to be okay once we get through that Fed meeting. All right, Jeff, we almost got to wrap things up, but one thing I didn't hear you mention and you haven't really put out there in your notes that you sent to us is your take on the Delta variant and its potential impact on the market. Just a week ago, we saw it have a huge impact. Markets had their worst day of the year. 
How do you see that playing out, especially this week with so many other factors? I think it's been much more diminished than we anticipated. I was on CNBC just a week ago when we did see a lot of red in the tape. We saw the Dow Jones nearly down 1,000 last Monday. But what were the options expectations? I rely upon the options market to help us navigate through these choppy waters. And the options market, specific to the VIX, never went over 25. And the fact that you didn't see that type of fear in the marketplace, that gave me confidence that that was just a turbulent event. And we actually bought that. So it's been a great opportunity to reposition. I know the S&P 500 is at 4,400. Near all-time highs as we continue to grind higher. But there's so much money on the sideline. There's so much momentum underneath the surface place. I don't think the Delta variant is going to have the ability to really push us back. But I could be wrong. But hopefully everyone stays health and safety out there, Frank. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.